when um, I started reading Holland's 38, I don't know, years ago, um, I have pictures from back then in an album. And if you look at most of those pictures, the rabbits have a low head mount, they don't have great bone, they have very narrow, long, snipey heads, long, way longer ears than what we would like to see today. I mean, they were dreadful, dreadful, compared to what we have today. Bone was not even talked about. In the 38 to 40 years that we've been breeding Holland Lops, the bone has improved dramatically, especially in terms of length of bone. My name is Deborah Sandoval, and I am um, part of Brock's Fallen Ears Rabbitry. I've been raising Holland Lops for 40 years. My name is Nicole Brockridi. I've been raising Holland Lops for 38 years. I am with Brock's Fallen Ears. Well, to me, bone is so much part of the appearance of the rabbit. It's part of what is, I consider, a breed characteristic of a Holland Lop. Lopped ears, big head, massive, wide, short, heavy boned. That's one of the things that defines a Holland Lop, which is way more important than just the points that are on it. Exactly. If it's got exactly. narrow, fine boned, long legs, to me it's not epitomizing what a Holland Lop should look like. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But there are other breeds that also have heavy bone and that's a breed characteristic for them as well. Like, for example, French Lops. Well, absolutely. Um, but they also they should, have a great big head. Yeah, exactly. But those are heavy bone are important in those breeds too. I think it's what separates them from, certainly from commercial breeds or, or fine boned breeds of rabbits. When I look at, and when I think about good bone on a Holland Lop, I'm looking at multiple dimensions of the bone. It's not just the width of the bone, but it's also the length of the bone and the strength of the ankles, even though that isn't really the bone. I look at that in terms of does the rabbit sit up on its feet or does it bend at the pasterns and have weak ankles. So when I think of poor bone, it's fine bone, which are more like pencils rather than, you know, tree stumps. It's pretty obvious when you see a good one. It's not so obvious when you see ones that have a more narrow chest and their feet are together. Sometimes those can have good bone, but it doesn't look like it as much as if it has a wide chest. Yeah. And also too, fine bone or poor bone, I think of as being long legs right. as exactly. well. Thin exactly. and long. Mm -hmm. I, I like a rabbit in a Holland where it sits up enough that you can see its leg right. and not just its feet. When you see just the feet, you don't see enough of the leg to be able to actually evaluate bone. the bone. Right. When you just see the feet sticking out like this. You need to see a little bit of the leg. Now you don't want those long extended legs as we all have seen and you know we've had those too. But you want to see enough leg to be able to judge the bone. If all you see is the feet, that means that the rabbit is crouched down it's on its, its leg. It's bent like what we would elbows. call elbows. And it's crouched down so its feet appear to be coming out of its chest. You cannot judge bone by feet alone. You, it, you just can't. You have to be sitting up enough so you see some leg. You don't the leg wanna... that's between the elbow and the, and the foot. Feet and the what would be called an ankle. Yeah. Okay. And, and also, to too, some. you can also tell to some extent by flipping the rabbit over and looking at its hind legs. Right. And right. so forth. Those should also be short and wide. But I really like looking, looking at, the, at front. the front legs. Yeah. Generally speaking, head, size, and shape has a positive correlation with bone. Absolutely. Those rabbits with good bone, short, thick legs also have short, Usually. wide, big heads. I mean, 
maybe not 100%. Nothing's ever 100%. Again. Just, it's often, if you see a rabbit with a really narrow head, you can probably guess that the bone is going to be fairly narrow also. What we say a finer, more refined yeah. animal, which is not what we're breeding for. It doesn't do any good whatsoever if a rabbit has really nice bone but won't pose in a way so that you can actually see that bone. If the rabbit is crouched down like this with its head on the table, it can have the most beautiful bone in the world, but you'll never see it, so what good is it? You want a rabbit that'll sit up enough so that you can see its front legs, see how strong its feet are, and, and, and see that width of bone and the shortness of the leg. So I'm, I'm looking for a rabbit, not only that has good bone, but that poses in a way that it shows off its bone. So if I was gonna offer tips to anybody judging Hall and Lops, um, in terms of that 10 points on bone. If you, you, again, if you can't see any of the leg, you can't see what the bone's gonna be. Being able to pose the rabbit properly is the first ingredient that you need in order to be able to assess the bone. If you can't get the rabbit to sit up so right. that you can see its chest, see its legs, then you're gonna have a hard time evaluating the bone. The biggest tip I would give to judges mm -hmm. in posing Hollands is use a gentle, light hand. If you grab onto their head, are heavy, their handed, eyes. are heavy handed with them, they're gonna fight you, they're gonna be jumping all around the table, you're not gonna get a good look at their, at their bone or their chest. You, you need to do is, is control the body and just very gently give a little bit of upward, upward pressure on the head to encourage them to shift their weight back onto their back legs and extend their front legs so that you can see their beautiful chest and their beautiful legs. Hopefully beautiful. <laughs> Hopefully. If not, well, then they don't deserve to be in the top of the class. The other thing that you sometimes need to do, get them to sit still and pose because they're used to it. If you get them to pose, to take a step back so that you can see what's below the head. See the, the, Whole the, thing. the leg, the chest and the legs. Um, and see the top line, it, it, get the whole picture. And, and it's, it's sometimes difficult to do when you're right on top of the rabbit like this. Um, so maybe take a step back. That, that would be my best suggestion. Anyway, so this is a young senior buck that has not had a lot of show experience, so he's not really good at, at sitting still. But you can see what I'm saying about, about trying to control their back end so they're not scooting back and then I just put my fingers right under their head to give them chin. just chin. under their chin to give them the encouragement to sit up what I'm what I'm looking at and what you can see even if I'm holding his head up is see how deep his chest is see how short and wide his legs are and how he t he sits up on his feet he's he, his legs aren't bent aren't flippered I think he has excellent bone because his bone is short, it's wide, and, thick. and it's thick, and, and he, when he does sit up, which he was doing earlier, but not so much now, he's up on his, up on his toes. He's not, he's not flat-footed. You know, you can see he's, he's not bending his leg. His elbow is like right there. So, so the length from his elbow to the tip of his toe is not very long. I mean, I haven't compared it to other rabbits, but it's it's not very long. And you can see that that his foot is is mounted straight onto the end of his leg. If you can, if I can get him to sit right. I don't know if you can see that, but his elbow is like right here, so he doesn't have a very long leg, and it goes right straight down. It doesn't bend up. I can't make him do it. I don't want to hurt his leg. What I'm feeling for, what I'm trying to find on him is the corresponding to this this bone right here on a human, which is right there. Okay? So what we're looking at is the distance between this bone and the elbow.
that that appears when I'm feeling it is sort of the narrowest point of the bone. It's right before the wrist joint. You want it to be just a gentle, so it's not tugging or it's not tight. We're going to measure the fur. It's prime up here. And then we're going to give him an A, B, or a C on bone. I'm going to give him an A. It, it's blown me away. I'm, I'm like shocked, shocked. Measurement wise, this rabbit has exactly the same length and diameter of bone as our A level buck. But you look at her and you're going, she does not have good bone. I would not call this a rabbit with good bone. But part of that has to do with how she presents her bone Again, if you look at how she's sitting, she is not up on her toes. She is out this way on her legs at, at a at a angle from her body. They're going forward instead of going up and down. And when you pose her or try to pose her so that you can see her front chest, she doesn't have the, the, the width and depth and mass in through the chest that our good buck did. And that goes a long way towards the appearance of the bone. So if you were to make a statement, you could maybe say if she had a deeper chest, right, that would make her front legs look... Look much better, much better. If she had a deeper, wider chest... And an upright head nerve. And if she was stronger up on her front legs and not out on her front legs, not having her legs angled forward instead of up and down, then she'd have just as good a bone as one of our best bucks.
very important. Oh, it's shorter though. This has got short fur. Ha ha, look at that. So that does that does go with part of our theory because this one only has like I would say one and a quarter. But that's that the point. but that's the point that we were talking about at the very beginning that those rabbits with longer fur have, have appearance but of more bone. And and again, we get back to the presentation of the bone, not just the objective measurement of the bone, but how well does the rabbit present its Itself. bone. Right. And that has to do with how it its joints are being shown. Does it tend to show with a, a an extended leg or does it tend to show with a, a flexed and leg? You want, but this is very interesting because I think as breeders, this would be very interesting for people to realize that what we can see, what we think of as good bone, is it's an illusion. It's an illusion. It's not really a measurement like English lop ears or like, you know, 24 or 26 or whatever. Maybe the reason we don't do a lot of objective measurements in, in judging rabbits, meaning that we don't take a ruler out, right. is because it, it's, it's, it's our intuition, it's our right. eye, it's, it's like more of an artful right. eye that, that judges rabbits, not. Right. I've never seen a judge measure the bone on the hollow and lop. And yet bone has a tenth of that hundred points. But I can see from what we've done tonight that so much of that is really subjective. It, it's blown me away. I'm I'm like shocked, shocked. Has anyone ever looked at bone like this in no. the years you look at no, rabbits? No, 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 never done no. this. Have often thought about it. Have often wanted to do this, but haven't actually done it. Have have have, have wondered how it would be, because it would be really nice if you could go like, oh, hey, bone measures this length. It's good. Bone measures this length. It's, it's bad. bad. You know, and they're here's gone. the diameter. This is good. Yeah. It would be nice, but, but that isn't the way it's working. So I guess if we had a, a machine that could judge rabbits, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't judge it, correctly. It wouldn't judge correctly. And so, that's, and that's why I've always said that judging is a very subjective, um, how you apply the points, what your eye sees, how you perceive something. And it's very much the gestalt of the entire rabbit and not the sum of its individual okay. pieces. But as a, I have to say, as a breeder, I appreciate it when a judge at least looks at and makes a comment on bone. Because, Absolutely. Because Absolutely. I think Absolutely. it is an important Absolutely. integral part of, of, of a Hall and Lop's appearance. Right. So. And I think every top Hall and Lop breeder will say that, that they want a judge to comment on bone correctly on bone, which now we've seen is totally subjective, Not about the measurement. subjective, but at least that they're taking that into consideration in their overall evaluation, uh, you know, of a rabbit. Looking at her, I would go, no, I don't care much for her bone. No. Um, I wouldn't want to keep this doe for breeding with the kind of bone she has, even though the measurements came out that she's got just as good a bone as a lot of our other animals. And this is this has gone way deeper. We've discovered. Wow, that's incredible. Is the skeleton is wow. not what controls what you see when you look at bone. It's Jesus. not the skeleton. It's the combination of the, combination. the fur. It's, it's also it's also the combination of the depth of chest and how they present their and bone. The head. That so much dough, for scientific theory. That dough does not have good bone. I'm, gonna interview uh, I'm only getting your upper half, you look great. Um, can you... My old blue, um, you know, Costco <laughs> t-shirt. Ch it changed my clothes. When this is Nicole, my, my when Costco $8 t-shirt. And Nicole's like, why? Why are you changing your clothes? Yeah, well, you're fine, Deborah.